All right, now that they're actually working on the uh, actual ceramic coating part, done with the polish and everything on my truck, I thought this would be a good time to talk with Brian and maybe dispel some of the myths surrounding ceramic coating. Because I know when we started this process last year, I came in with some uh, unfair thinking, some things I heard about, about how ceramic coating is supposed to be a miracle product and never have to touch your vehicle again, going to stay uh, looking brand new for the for the life of the vehicle and found out, you know, it's not all those things are true. While ceramic coating is definitely far, far superior to any kind of wax or polish, there are some things that you need to know some and some myths that are not actually true about ceramic coating. So we're going to try and dispel a few of those now. So Brian, go ahead and take it away. Tell us everything that the consumer might think about ceramic coating that might not actually be true. All right guys, today's a big day. We are gonna start making some equipment look like brand new. It's not gonna be me doing it. I've already done what I can to make this combine look good. Uh, Brian and his son from Front Row Detailing gonna be out here to uh, do some more ceramic coating. If you remember from last year, we had a tractor, a uh, sprayer, and two vehicles uh, ceramic coated uh, last year. This year, we are gonna have our combine done our other big tractor done and our water truck done plus my new 2500 ram done anyway it's kind of going to be a difficult project today because uh, it's finally warmed up this week uh, we're about 55 degrees whereas last week we were hovering there around zero and everything is cold as you can see there's a lot of moisture in the air and everything is sweating and wet and everything so uh waiting on him to him to show up just let me show you the difference in the new paint and old paint. This is what I painted uh, uh, last week right here. And then look right here on the side panel that's been waxed and maintaining everything. You see how much of an orangish uh, color it is plus you know, kind of dull and everything. So really going to be interesting to see if they can bring the, the shine and the uh, deep dark red color back out on this combine before they put the ceramic coating on. And then yesterday, uh, Andy went to h &R, picked up a big box of goodies here. We got all of our uh, filters that we're going to need to service, but uh, down beneath here, got some other stuff we're going to need. Well, after unpacking the box, I didn't see what I was looking for. All we got is filters there. Andy picked these up, up yesterday, uh, checking the truck to see if we missed anything. Ah, that's what we're looking for here. Yep, we got a bunch of uh, decals right here. So yeah, uh, Brian and them going to be uh, taking all the uh, decals off the combine because if, if you look up here, you can see pressure washers really kind of gotten into them and uh, old decals on some nice restored paint is going to look pretty crappy. So the, the decals for this combine, fairly reasonable uh, price. So we got new decals we're going to go on with. So just want to take some good uh, video here so I know exactly where the decals go and we can put them back exactly like they're supposed to be. Good. All right, it was literally closed all last week. All right, so, uh, so what's your plan going to be, Brian? All right, so we want to attack um, the piece of equipment that you're going to use first, right? So we'll get the Blue Holland, the, uh, the New Holland done first. Then we'll go here for the water truck. We'll bounce over to your truck. And then lastly, since you're not gonna use the combine for a bit, we'll, we'll hop on the combine. All right, so you're gonna, you're gonna start wa washing the blue tractor. And... We'll get all three of these washed today. Hopefully the rain is like this. It's not gonna impact as much. Um, but we'll get all three of those taken care of today, hopefully, at least these two. And then we'll hop on your truck maybe later today. That's a fine day to pull off decals, isn't it? Absolute lovely. <laughs> That's better than the snow and ice we had here last week. At least we can see what we're working on. Yeah. First step in this process is going to be uh, getting these decals off, and they're going to be doing a uh, th three step decontamination wash, and then we start the polishing.
All right, right now they putting the uh, iron remover on there. It foams on, then you see how it's pink right there. That's removing all the iron from the paint. Of course, we got a lot here on the wheels, uh, coming here around the, the wheel studs and everything where we got, it got exposed metal. Uh, I know it's hard to see, but there, there's a little bit of pink there on the hood too. So just remo removing the decontaminants from the paint. Yeah, so if you just look, you know, all through here into the, looking into the paint, you can see the oxidation is there. Now this this unit's been decontaminated, washed, fully decontaminated. Well, just look at the difference in color where, where the stickers or where the decals were. It's a lot, lot different right there. So when we're finished, all of this, you know, will match basically what was behind the stickers. And then any of that remnants, that'll go away as well. Even right through here, I don't know if you can put up, pick it up on camera, but you've got a lot of scratching from where this has been washed in the past, most likely, because obviously where this adds, this is probably not gonna hit anything, but this is just wash media that's coming across here and scratching that paint. You, got, you can really tell right here on the fender where it had a 50th anniversary sticker there. Look how much uh, fading that there is right here on the fender of course it's going to have a lot more direct uh, sunlight going going to it Third day into the project, they got uh, the New Holland T7 270 done. My decals still haven't showed up for that, but it's all done except for putting the decals on. My uh, truck here, they've got it uh, completely polished. And man, look, <laughs> look at that. I don't even need a mirror. And still got to coat it. They're going to coat the wheels. Got to take them off, polish them, and coat them. And now about to get started on some of the big equipment. Got our water truck in here. Uh, the paint is in, you know, for its age, it's definitely in real good condition, but it's, it's faded and oxidized pretty bad. It doesn't show up near as bad with white, but just look how dull the uh, glow of the light is in this. So, you know, other than the combine, I'm really excited to see this. And the big reason that we're ceramic coating this as well, I mean, it, it's out in the field with a lot of uh, chemicals and stuff. You know, we're carrying a bunch of chemicals on the bed. Now, they're not going to coat the bed and everything. We've had it repainted, but, you know, it's it's already starting to rust through in a few places. We're not going to coat the bed. We eventually probably just going to have to sandblast places on it and repaint it. But uh, uh, the body and everything is still in real good shape and won't protect it from any, uh, you know, any kind of chemicals being drifted from the sprayer or dripped on as we're filling up or anything like that. You can kind of see here on the fuel tank where, uh, you know, chemicals have uh, drip, dripped off or we had some spills or whatever. And uh, I doubt they were going to be able to pull all that out, but they're going to shine up the aluminum and everything and 
uh, should uh, at least be able to make it look better and then hopefully protect it from any further degradation all right look at the hood here on this uh, sterling truck uh i mean white kind of hard to tell the difference like you like you normally would with a uh, different color but you can, you can see my reflection in there barely and then uh, going over to the half of the hood that's not polished i disappear like a vampire I think this paint on this truck is right at 20 years old and before yeah, yeah before we uh before we got it it probably never been waxed or anything but uh polishing's doing the doing this thing some good here and then looking over here on these tanks i don't think i need to explain that at all that's it's pretty self-evident right there and this was aluminum after i had uh, uh, uh sprayed acid wash on their aluminum brightener won't have to do that anymore after we get a good coating on on that man that looks that looks fantastic there if you can do that right there on the front bumper it'll look nice But that bumper's in pretty rough shape. Got some pitting and stuff on there. But uh, that's definitely a, a big difference from this over here. now that they're actually working on the uh, actual ceramic coating <coughs> part done with the polish and everything on my truck i thought this would be a good time to talk with brian and maybe dispel some of the myths surrounding ceramic coating because i know when we started this process last year i came in with some uh, unfair thinking some things i heard about about how ceramic coating is supposed to be a miracle product and never have to touch your vehicle again going to stay uh, looking brand new for the for the life of the vehicle and found out you know it's not all those things are true while ceramic coating is definitely far far superior to any kind of wax or polish there are some things that you need to know some and some myths that are not actually true about ceramic coating so we're going to try and dispel a few of those now but brian go ahead and take it away tell us everything that the consumer might think about ceramic coating that might not actually be true all right so first off like matt said it, it is not a Let's just call it set it and forget it. Um, you still have to wash your vehicle. I'll cover its car, I'll cover its tractor, I'll cover its truck, anything that's ceramic coated, um, you still have to properly maintain. For example, uh, Optico, which is the, the line that we use, they have an entire maintenance line now that you can even buy out on Amazon uh, for washing and deep cleaning, mineral um, MDR, the mineral deposit remover, and some other products that will actually help you maintain your coating so that it will last long. If you don't wash it, if you don't get the bugs off of it, let's just say you go down to Florida. We all know how love bugs are bad in Florida. Uh, on a typical car that's not ceramic coated, it'll eat through that wax fairly quickly. With ceramic coating, you get time, right? Instead of doing it, instead of going through the paint today, it might be next week, it might be the following week. I can't give anybody an exact answer. What I can tell people though, is if you don't properly maintain it, like your car, like your body, your house, everything else that you should maintain, it ultimately will fail. Some coatings fail faster than others. Um, a lot of the coatings actually require um, annual maintenance. In that annual maintenance, they don't just clean your car for you, they actually put a top coat on it. So it really isn't a three, five, 10 lifetime warranty. 
it, the warranty is only good on those products as long as they continue to reapply um, more layers of ceramic coating. So it's, it's kind of false advertising on that and a lot of people buy into that without knowing what's really happening. Well, the products that we use, as long as you are doing the proper maintenance, um, you don't have to do any kind of reapplication of, of any kind of ceramic coating. You, you do have to do an annual deeper clean, especially in the farming industry where you have all these chemicals that are just sitting there day after day after day um, creating layers um, on that coating. So yeah, in the, in the ag space, most farmers aren't going to get their tractors back at the end of the day and wash them off. I'm not telling you to do that. Uh, it would be nice if on a weekly basis, every other week, even a month, it'd be nice to go ahead and, and clean those vehicles off. If you wait till the end of the season, it is going to require a much deeper clean because everything's just, you know, those chemicals are layering on top of each other. They will come off, hence why you're getting the ceramic coating to begin with. Uh, something that's not ceramic coated, try and get those chemicals off and, you know, Matt, you even know it's gonna take a, a, an effort to get that stuff off. Now, when you're talking about deeper clean, you're not talking about just a, a good hand washing with, with the soap. No. Because there's actual uh, particles that actually adhere to the ceramic coating that Correct. take away the, the water beating, beating up and everything. So you're talking about these specialized products that Opti uh, carries to Correct. help, well, you know, the MDR, the mineral remover, the iron Correct. remover. Power clean. Power clean is your general deep cleaner. And let, 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 let me break in right there. I can vouch for power clean. I got it for my equipment this year and I had been using a uh, bleach white to remove like a lot of tough bugs, the, uh, the stains from the cotton on the wheels. Uh, this power clean is by far the most superior cleaning product I have ever used. It will pretty much take anything off. It, it's absolutely fantastic. Now, it's not cheap but you want something that will do the job work with a minimum of elbow grease, power clean. I mean, it's, it's, about, it's about $30 a gallon, I think. It's $30, $30, $30 a gallon and you yeah. mix it 50-50 with water. So it's definitely not one of your cheaper products, but you want something that works, get you some power clean. I ordered mine off uh, Amazon. Optics has got their own store on Amazon and it'll be at your house in a few days. And a big note of caution when it comes to power clean, don't get it on glass in the sun. It will etch glass. Uh, especially if it's straight. Power clean can be diluted all the way down to 10 to one. Um, so depending, you can clean your interiors, you can clean exteriors. It's a great general purpose cleaner. Uh, Ferrex, that's the iron remover. That's in some of Matt's videos, if you've ever seen, um, you'll see like pink and purple start to run. That's getting rid of the iron that's on that surface. Um, and then the MDR we've talked about. MDR is something we're really gonna use annually. That's gonna be mixed together uh, left on the surface, agitated for a little bit, and that's when that beating is gonna come back because that really attacks uh, all the minerals that are sitting on top of the surface. Now, another expectation I had was uh, ceramic coating was gonna be almost scratch proof. Now, we all know you take a key or a knife, it, even if it's got ceramic coating, it's gonna scratch. Exactly. But, it, but even your more minor scratches, uh, you can scratch ceramic coating. It is not, it's not scratch proof. No, it's not. Um, I tell everybody, if you want a car that's encapsulated so you don't have to worry about everything, get it wrapped with paint protection film, otherwise known as PPF. Um, if you, as Matt said, if, if someone keys your car, I'm sorry, you're still gonna have a keyed car. If someone hits your car, it can't you know, protect against accidents. Uh, but for glass, for example, years ago, there was testing done on an F-150 windshield where half the windshield was coated and the other half was not. We took a BB gun, shot a BB gun at the uncoated glass and it cracked instantly. On the side that was coated, it took 14 shots of that BB gun in order to crack the glass to meet the same crack they did with, with on the uncoated side. So there is some protection, especially on glass. Um, on, on paint, is there some protection? Yes. Let's just take, for example, a Jeep that's going through the brush. I mean, everybody that drives Jeeps know when they go off road, they're gonna get them scratched up. It's going to give a little more protection um, for those, you know, for, for something that's going along like that. You know, something that would leave that micro marring even that we talk about. It's going to leave, give you some protection of that. But it absolutely will not give you the protection that a lot of people out there are selling, um, scratch proof, scratch resistant, whatever you want to call it. Now, I guess the last thing I really want to tackle is, is oxidation. 
you know, I was under the impression that oxidation is caused by sun hitting the paint. It, it occurs from the top down, and when you do your polishing part and you remove the oxidation, then you coat it with ceramic coating. That's something you don't have to worry about again anymore. But as in, over the past gonna, year, we've seen that that's not necessarily the case. It will slow it down, okay? Are there instances where it doesn't come back? Absolutely. Are there instances where it does come back? Yes. As aggressive? No. So it's going to slow down that chemical process that's, that's happening from the inside out. So I don't know. Every vehicle is different. I mean, we have a, a fifth wheel that's back in our shop right now. It's a 2020. It's worse than your combine that's sitting out there. You know, it, every surface is different. Um, some surfaces, and, and if you're in Florida. Not only the surface, but, but the substrate. That correct. The paint's on is different. Where's it at? Is it in South Florida? Is it in Texas? Or is it in Minnesota? Are we talking about painted plastic, painted fiberglass, or paint, Everything. Paint, painted metal? Everything. So, it, again, there's not a one size fits all answer to that question of how's it going to protect against oxidation? Okay. It, are you storing it inside? You know, how are you using it? Are you keeping it clean properly? So there's a lot of things that, that uh, a lot of things that go, a lot of variables that go into that question. So the bottom line is my video on this ceramic coating when we started this last year was, is ceramic coating farm equipment worth it? In my opinion, yes, it is worth it, but with understanding that it's not a miracle product, it's not a miracle cure, and you still got machinery that still needs to be properly maintained and properly serviced. So just like you're going to change the engine oil in your tractor, your vehicle, you also still need to properly pay, uh, you also still need to properly care for the paint and the ceramic coating to get the best benefit and the longest life out of it. All right, y'all ready to see the final results of the ceramic coating? I gotta say, Brian blew me away again. Let's start out here with, with a water truck. Now, all they did was uh, the cab. They didn't do anything on the back half on the trailer part. And uh, I thought this was gonna be their second toughest project because this paint was really rough. Had a lot of uh, impurities on it and everything. And actually, this is several days after they got done. We've actually already used this truck in the field to put out our nitrogen, but and it's really hard to tell from, from a white vehicle, but they did a fantastic job. That surface is slick and smooth, and if you catch in the right light, I mean, you can see a good reflection of everything. You know, look what they did for the uh, tanks and the steps. I mean, you, you can tell we, we've already had to step up on there, but it looks great. The bumper, they was able to bring a lot of shine back, back to it. Again, this truck's a 2004 model, so it's right at 20 years old. And of course, they didn't put the best paint coatings on uh, 
on semi trucks back then. When you kind of catch in the light, I mean, you can see, you see nice, nice reflection right there. I mean, it's just, it's slick as a pen. Now, a lot of y'all might think that, you know, why'd you spend that kind of money on, on an old semi water truck? Well, for one thing, the paint was still in pretty good condition. And the second reason is we plan on having this thing for a long time. We want to keep it looking as good as we can, as long as we can. And also, you know, it's out in the field spraying, working around, you know, potentially corrosive chemicals and everything. We, we just really want to give it that added layer of protection. Now, I'll recoup my money back out of it on this truck whenever we sell it. Uh, most likely not, but uh, anything I can do to protect my equipment, you know, I, I, I like to do because we're going to keep this thing for the long haul like we do most all the rest of our equipment. And before I show you the next piece of equipment, just want to give you a one year update on a sprayer that we had coated last year and she's still looking good, real good. Now the booms on this, they look all that great. I mean, they kind of get beaten, banged around. They got, uh, you know, corrosive chemicals are being sprayed on them, but I know the vast majority of it is protected good with a, with a ceramic coating. So all that money and labor we put in, what, two years ago, uh, getting the booms repainted, uh, even though we won't have that fantastic glossy finish on them, uh, I know we shouldn't have a problem with rust. Now we just got brought this thing out of the field uh, spraying nitrogen, so it, it's a little dirty. But looking here at side panels, you know, it's, uh, and the hood, even though the hood's a little dirty, you know, we still got a real nice uh, mirror finish on it. All right, here's the uh, almost uh, finished project of my tractor. As you can tell, there's uh, no decals on there right now because the decals for this tractor had to come from England, so still wait on them to be shipped. But as you can tell, I mean, look at that, look at that paint. I mean, a mirror finish right there just looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, can't quite remove all the imperfections. Look how scratched up the side panel is. And then the plastics, we kind of got a layer of dust on here because it's been several days since, since, since they done done this, but really restored the plastics. Unfortunately, they, they couldn't do very much for the toolbox. It's really sticking out like a sore thumb, but uh, coated all the glass and everything. And we really found a big benefit in having the glass coated helps keep it a lot cleaner, a lot easier to clean up and uh, uh, really really repels water but again looks really really awesome i mean this tractor is now it's a 2015 model so it's now nine years old and looks pretty much brand new now all we gotta do is just get the decals on it and all right i know y'all like the tractor and the truck and everything it all looks good and everything but what you really want to see is a combine and i gotta say out of everything that needed it this is what i expected the most improvement in and i was not disappointed at all almost the camera's picking up you can see my reflection in it in it here now and it's definitely got a, a depth to it that's just fantastic and i was really kind of worried uh, about whether they would be able to bring out that bright red to look like new or if the paint paint was too far gone but i'm definitely impressed they did a fantastic job on the polishing and it really brought that uh, bright red color the case sage is known for and made it look about as close to new as possible in fact here's here's one of the spots that we repainted yeah uh it didn't blend as well as i wanted to i started wet sanding it just try and make it blend in and then you can kind of see right there around the edge you know, got the paint and started getting into the primer. Got the edge smooth, but wasn't able to make it blend in. You know, in order to fix it properly, the whole panel would have to be re repainted. Still looks better than a, a, a silver patch where the paint paint had come off. So it's not a brand new combine. It's never going to look like a brand new combine, but I think we did a pretty dang good job uh, getting as close as we could. And uh, the decals, uh, if you ever have this done to to your equipment I, I highly advise just have the have the decal stripped off and buy a new set it really makes a huge difference i wish we'd done that with the uh, uh new holland tractor that we had done last year because uh, those graphics really look terrible on it on it now but i'm super glad we took the decals off we did have a few issues putting them back on they're not perfect you can tell right there we, we got a little bit of a wrinkle because we started drifting down and, and just tried to correct and when you put on decals that long 
It's really hard to keep them straight and lined up while peeling off the backing and get them smoothed down to get bubbles and wrinkles out. It, it's really hard, but yeah, the new decals on it really make it. Now the feeder house and everything here that I painted, because the paint was so fresh on it, uh, they were not able to polish it, but they did ceramic coating coat it so realistically i should have uh, painted it a little bit earlier i wish wish i had to where they could have polished it maybe we would gotten a little bit more glossy uh, finish on it but i mean the feeder house it, it's gonna get beat up it's gonna get walked on but now i got the ceramic coating on there to keep it from fading back so really excited not really good i'm not looking forward to carrying it to the wheat field uh, next june and getting it getting it dusty again but uh you know, if this performs like my other equipment did after we got it coated, at least it should clean up quite a bit easier, uh, you know, whenever we get, get done with harvest. So doesn't look bad for 12 years old and 4,500 hours. I'd put it up against just about anything out there. So now that we got that done, it's going to be time to uh, focus on the uh, getting it ready to go for another year. The few odds and ends we got to do on parts and uh, making sure another 1500 acres can go through it and really not much to see on the dodge yes they did polish it uh, but yes i have driven it since they got done so it is dirty it's not really popping like it was like it was before but but this sucker ought to be protected for the long haul too so well guys uh having your equipment ceramic coated it's definitely a significant financial investment in your equipment and it's not for everybody but uh, for those of y'all that are interested, I highly recommend you contact Brian at Front Row Detailing to uh, get your equipment done. I mean, depending on the size of the job, he will travel quite a distance. You know, they're based out of Huntsville, Alabama. I've known that he's gone up as far up into Indiana before, you know, just depending on how big the job is and whether it's worth his while. But I know he services pretty much all the Mid-South and a lot of the Southeastern states. So if you're in that, uh, so if you're in that area, I got his contact uh, information down in the description below. Be sure to uh, be sure to call him up. And uh, I know there's a lot of different outfits out there you might see on Facebook offering the services. And I don't know much about them, but I know what kind of job Brian does. And they are just absolutely meticulous on their preparation to make sure you get the best result possible. However, I will say that your results may differ from equipment to equipment or even fender to fender on your equipment, just depending on what the underlying substrate is, how bad it's oxidized. Uh, we did have to have him come back out yesterday and redo the hood of our sprayer because oxidation came back out in it and he came back out, no charge, fixed it back up, put a double coat on and it still looks fantastic. So I will, I, I do know that he does stand behind his services and his in the product that he applies. If you ever have any kind of problems, he will pick up that phone and he will take care of you. Or at least, or at least he has for me. So anyway, guys, I hope that answers a lot of your questions. I uh, hope it makes your decision a little bit easier if you're looking into this process and appreciate y'all watching. We'll be back in the next one.